I'm Joe Conscious. I'm with NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado. Tuesday night was very interesting. About 5 o'clock Boulder time Tuesday night, the sun erupted from a previously active uh, sunspot group and it caused a strong radio blackout event very quickly to occur. But more interesting than that, there was also a, a fast coronal mass ejection launched towards the Earth that we're anticipating is going to disturb the Earth's magnetic field starting about early Thursday morning, about 3 o'clock local time, give or take a few hours here in Boulder. A coronal mass ejection is a cloud of the solar outer solar atmosphere, plasma, its charged particles, its magnetic field, that typically with a big eruption at the sun, part of the outer atmosphere will literally get blown away. It's our job here at NOAA to pay close attention to activity at the sun and to monitor and forecast when eruptions such as this occur and try to alert our customers as soon as we possibly can as to the conditions we're seeing and our expectations for further activity. The first thing to occur, the quickest thing to occur uh, from an event such as we saw last night is what's called a radio blackout. And that's when high frequency radio communications are either uh, impeded or, or totally wiped out as a consequence of the flare photons on the day side of the Earth. Now if you're a pilot flying a transoceanic flight and you need to check in with your position, very often you use HF to do that. The next thing to happen, and just because the particles are a little slower to get here, is what we call a solar radiation storm. During a solar radiation storm, the very high latitudes and the conditions that HF relies on there can be really affected. Now up until about 10 years ago, that didn't matter very much, but now the commercial airlines are flying, frequently flying, polar routes from North America to Asia through there, and they rely on HF to file position reports and for other things. So they're paying close attention to the, to the current situation and wanting a prediction of, of what's to come as well. And and, and as of this morning, we have been in contact with some commercial carriers, and we know that they've already taken the plan to reroute some flights away from the poles for the next 24 hours. And also, very, we have a long history with supporting manned space flight. And even back to the Apollo days, back in the 1960s, NASA has come to us here at NOAA to ask for forecasts and specifications of solar radiation events that may affect people in space. So we, we can continue to do that with the International Space Station and uh, we are also paying close attention for other reasons in terms of the radiation environment because satellites can be affected by those as well. The last part of this space weather eruption is the coronal mass ejection, this outer solar atmosphere that was blown away, we think, last night. And we expect it to arrive about 3 o'clock in the morning local time tomorrow. And the impacts of a CME are very strong, especially on the Earth's magnetic field. We're expecting strong geomagnetic storming at periods for the next 24 hours. And some of the systems that are affected by geomagnetic storming consist of the electric power grids, for example, who worry about unwanted induced currents during geomagnetic storms. GPS-based operations, especially high-precision GPS, may falter at times just because the conditions are so difficult. Probably the more typical GPS that you have in your car or on your cell phone probably won't see much of an effect. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be a storm that's going to cause any large-scale disruption to the power grid, um, mostly because the power grid operators are paying close attention to the current conditions, and they do have some experience in, in working through conditions like this. Now, the, the big question is, will you be able to see the aurora where you live? In North America, if, if conditions play out the way we think, probably more like on Thursday evening rather than on early Thursday morning would be the prime time to look down to latitudes like the lower Great Lakes or so across the south of the northern border, the northern tier, but, but maybe perhaps at times making its way to the middle of the U.S. Uh, the sky, you need a nice clear sky, of course. You don't need clouds. Uh, a, 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 an ill effect or, or a downside is that the moon is full. So there is going to be a lot of background light in the sky. But if you're interested in looking for the aurora uh, you know, over the next day or two, this would be a good time to do it. Okay. Now it's very interesting because the active region on the sun that produced the activity last night and, and is 
been so interesting to us today, actually retains its potency as far as we can tell. So there are prospects for more pulses, more eruptions from the sun over the next week until we lose sight of this active center, which would then cause additional space weather conditions to develop, and we'll be monitoring those very closely, of course.